Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. My name is John Zimmerman, and this is my coverage of the Yimby Town 2024 bike tour of the Red Line Parkway, led by Tom Wald, Executive Director. I'm Tom Wald, I'm with Red Line Parkway Initiative. I'm gonna save most of the remarks until we get to downtown station. And this will be the most um, traffic heavy part of the ride and most of the ride will be flat. The only exception is basically four or five blocks down to downtown station. We'll stop there and then I'll give remarks. I have a lot of questions for y'all to find out what your background is to hear what you wanna know on the ride. All right, getting our ride started here. As Tom mentioned, we're gonna be on some city streets. And as you can tell right away that these are incredibly wide one-way streets uh, that need to be converted to two-way and have some high quality, all ages and abilities, cycling facilities installed on them. We make it onto 4th Street and then make that transition from 4th Street onto the beginning of the Red Line Parkway. And you'll notice right away the Dutch inspired red concrete treatment uh, to indicate that this is a bikeway. So I had a good question right off the bat, which, which I didn't get into is that the, so the Red Line Parkway is a planned 32 to 36 mile trail that will go along the Capital Metro Red Line. And this is the downtown station here. And as you can kind of tell, the trail begins here right now. The project has been in conception for decades um, but then in 2004, uh, the, the voters in the, in the transit service area, Capital Metro, were asked to approve the railway. And as part of that, they were also asked to, uh, to approve the trail as well. And unfortunately, the trail has not been hardly built. There's only been about 10 to 15% of it that's, that's been completed. Um, so we found it as an organization uh, in 2017 and we've seen some successes so far. Some of the successes have been incremental, but I think the, the big thing is that Cap Metro is conducting a study to basically update and make it easier for the different cities to be able to build sections of the trail. I'll just get a little bit more of my background. I, I, do, I run the Red Line Parkway Initiative. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. And prior to that, I ran the organization uh, Bike Austin, you know, taking care of biking and walking in Austin and advancing that. Our work is, is divided into roughly four areas. So we have, we, we have make sure the parkway gets planned, make sure it gets funded, uh, make sure that, you know, even once it's funded, that it gets built and it gets built well and that there's space for it. And then the other thing is activation. So having activities, including this one, but other activations, making sure pe people know about it and that people from different communities who don't necessarily know the trails for them to make sure that they know they're, they're, they're more than welcome to be on the, on the trail. So a big thing that's going on, and I, I touched on a little bit, of, but a big thing is that after a lot of uh, other things that were taking attention away from our project, Cap Metro did hire a consulting firm um, and is funding a half million dollar study, the Red Line Trail study, to determine where the trail can fit in along the corridor. They previously did a study in 2007, but it was limited. It was, it was both conservative and it didn't have really complete buy-in internally at Cap Metro. And so now this time they're getting all our, they've all got all our ducks in a row. And so they're saying, this is where the trail can fit in. And um, that will really help get the, the trail built. Um, even just, just last week, we encountered that one of the, there's three cities along the corridor and one of the cities, and this is not uncommon, you know, it's so challenging to get that coordination with another agency that they just decided to build a trail outside of Cap Metro right away. Cause it's just, they can't afford to like wait six months, one year and so on and so forth. And so that's what we're trying to avoid with the study is like, the study is like, yes, it's available here. Here's, here's the person you talk to. You can use this space for the trail and go at it, right? So as you know, it follows a, a, the Metro rail, which is essentially a regional railway. Um, and eventually it'll have more more trips, but right now it runs every 35 minutes or so during the day, so it's not not that great. You know, the trail will connect to all the stations. We had a, a challenge in this area because they want, you know, they're putting in the train station and there wasn't quite enough room for the trail. And so there's these constant, this was a battle that was had maybe eight years ago, six, six to eight years ago. I just had to make a, you know, say, yes, this trail it really is important. We don't want it routed one block over and then come back. Um, those are the conversations that we have. Also, I want to briefly mention too, so this is Rush Square, um, downtown Austin. Um, its original plan for downtown had four public squares. Uh, this one, and there's Republic Square over there, and there's two other, well, there's actually one in that far corner, and then the one in the northeast corner was uh, replaced with a church. But our, our goal is to actually extend the trail 
in some fashion, make it a very high quality connection um, about a mi just about a mile down to Shoal Creek, which is, yeah, so if you all get a chance, go down to Shoal Creek, it's a really beautiful place. Um, but Republic Square is on the way. So going this way, we're gonna cross I-35, the frontage road, which is kind of crazy, and we're not gonna stop there because it's kind of loud and hard to talk there, but what you'll notice is there's no signal. And this is another one of those examples of multi-jurisdictional, like where you have to have all that cooperation, right? So we're crossing a TxDOT corridor, Texas Department of Transportation corridor. Cap Metro has a signalization for the railway, and then it's a city of Austin connection. So all those three parties have to cooperate in order to get the signals up, and it's just taken a really long time, but it's probably gonna happen within the next six months. Um, we'll go through a relatively new development that was completed uh, maybe 2018, yeah. Um, where they completed a trail section. We're gonna go through a really narrow section where there's a nice cafe, you get some trail side activation. And then we're gonna pull up to Plaza Saltillo and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about what we went by in, in that context. As we wait for Tom and the rest of the crew to get to us here, uh, a couple things that I wanted to mention. In addition to this being the downtown station, this is also the Austin Convention Center. And that area where we were paused and talking is actually what used to be 4th Street, which has been shut down to cars and has now been turned into a car-free plaza. And as we swing around here on the cycle path, we get to Red River and we have our own bicycle signal here. And then continuing down the cycle path, we're able to get over Waller Creek on this bridge here. And down to the right, you can see that we have a brand new multi-use path along Waller Creek uh, that will eventually take everybody down to the Ladybird Lake and the Butler Hike and Bike Trail. So this will be a wonderful opportunity for bicycle connectivity all the way down to the lake and that wonderful activity asset that we have down there. Uh, and this is the I-35 frontage road. We're able to pretty much roll across without too much drama at this point. And this is the location that Tom was referencing earlier where we will have a future signal to help enable people walking and biking to be able to get across the frontage road safely uh, and also on this side as well. And off to the left, you can see some of the development that Tom was referencing earlier. We're now looking back the other direction uh, with the development on the right side of the path. And you'll notice, uh, maybe you can just see it there in the background, is a Target logo. Yes, there is a Target uh, that is in that mixed use development there, as well as a Whole Foods market. And you probably notice just how incredibly close uh, all this housing is and offices and you know places to shop to the downtown area area. And again, having high quality, all ages and abilities, cycle network facilities, uh, being able to get people to their meaningful destinations as well as, you know, home which is super, super cool. And now we're gonna be rolling up onto the Plaza Saltillo transit stop. And that's what this facility is right here. I realized that geographically, I didn't describe like what parts of the city we're going through and just like to give you an idea, because some of you said that you want to explore the city. So obviously that's downtown. We came over on the east side. Um, this is the historic Latino uh, part of the city. Um, and then north of 7th is the historic African-American part of the city. Um, and I say historic because uh, I hear this all the time and locally, but I'm, I'm not sure you all, maybe you heard it in one of the presentations, but in Austin, there was a specific segregation plan in 1928. Um, basically, it, the, there were African-Americans and Latinos living throughout the city. I mean, it's much smaller than, right? But basically, the, the city cut off, the way, they, the way the city leadership did it is they cut off services to, to African-Americans and Latinos if you lived in a certain part of the city. They just, you know, whatever it was, wouldn't do, like they take, pick up your trash or like, no. uh, like don't provide electricity. And so these are the places where you can live. So um, yeah, I mean, just really stark, right? And then, you know, that was the dividing line was essentially the freeway. I mean, it was, it was called, it was East Avenue then, but that was the dividing line. So as we go through, you'll, we'll pass 7th Street. It's a pretty busy street. And again, that's the African-American part of the community. We're gonna go up just part way into the area. 
But it's been gentrified quite a bit. That's the other thing you might notice. It's just been incredibly gentrified. So it's not the same as it was even, I think probably about 15 years ago, it was significantly different. Um, this here is Plaza Saltillo, which is named after Austin's sister city in Mexico. It's gotten different amounts of love over the years. I think one thing that it struggled with is how to keep it activated. There was a farmer's market here pre-pandemic. I think that something like that could activate it again. I'm wondering how the trail and the parkway could, could serve to activate it. But, you know, right now the parkway is not, it's, it's still kind of disconnected. So it gets usage, but it doesn't get like necessarily thousands of people a day. A little bit on what we passed over, I had forgotten to mention Waller Creek. So if you all saw that like dugout creek with like the new concrete trail, that's a huge project. So there's an organization, Waterloo Greenway, that supports the Waterloo Greenway, which has a trail and a just a re, really reimagining of Waller Creek through downtown. 15, 20 years ago, the city decided to create a project where they would make sure that Waller Creek couldn't, couldn't flood downtown. So there's an intake about two miles from the river. And basically when it floods, the water runs through that intake directly into the river. And when there's not enough water, they siphon water up to it. So if it's dry, just so that there's always water flowing in the creek. But what that, that project did is it took a lot of the real estate downtown out of the floodplain. And then it also created this opportunity to rethink the, the trail along Waller Creek. It's, it's not gonna be a wide trail. It's more like, a, I don't know how to, it's more, more like a walking trail, but it's, it's gonna allow shops. It's gonna allow some, you know, uh, connection with nature along it too as well. But that paved thing that you saw is new, a new part of the trail along Waller Creek. Just for context, I-35, the project seems to be moving forward to radically rebuild I-35, expand it. One of the nice things though, is that they're, they are gonna, for the most part, put a, put a below ground. And one of the things that we were successful in getting is car-free crossings at I-35. So you won't encounter obviously the main lanes, but you also won't encounter the frontage road lanes. And there should be, we're working on finalizing getting the cap right next to it. So you basically won't even know that you're going over a freeway, which will be kind of nice for the users. And the Red Line Parkway crosses I-35 twice. It goes this way into East Austin, goes up north about a few miles north across I-35 again and continues on its journey. Seems like we're, that's being accomplished at both crossings, but it's still a work in progress. This station is gonna be rebuilt. This is one of the places where there's not really a continuous trail. If you notice right here, it turns into kind of an alleyway and it does that for just a couple blocks and then it continues as a trail over here. There is a federal grant for a project to rebuild the Plaza Saltillo station and connect some of the trail through here. It's about, I think it's an $18 million grant just to give you an idea of the size of the project. We're really pushing, they, in the original design, they did not do this, but we're really pushing for the trail to be basically legible, that it's an actual trail separated from cars. And one of the ways to accomplish that, and we'll ride this way to see it, there's this paseo over here with these, with these nice trees. And in their plan, they plan to narrow that a little bit. We're asking them to widen it. And the sacrifice is basically, you know, rechanging a design at 30%, not a big deal. And then the other thing is moving the station about 10 to 20 feet nor north. And I can go into, the, I'll, I'll say one more thing and then I'll go on to another subject. So this property here is gonna redevelop within the next couple of years. So it'll give us more breathing room and that should be possible. That's an active project right now. This entire area here where you see the new buildings, this one and all the other ones, was essentially a rail yard, you know, uh, shipping yard, that kind of thing. And Cap Me Capital Metro owned it because Cap Metro bought the railway in, I think, the 80s, maybe the 70s. I think they bought it in the 80s. Well, the 80s because they founded in the 80s. This was a planned development. Cap Metro sold it, sold it to, a, you know, or allowed a developer to build on it with particular things, mid-rise. And it was a little bit controversial because it was pushing mid-rise into East Austin, but it was so close to downtown, right? Um, this building here is the is the income restricted affordable housing. I think that's all of it, but it's it's great because it's right next to the station, next to the trail. Um, you'll note that cafe bar. Someone asked if it was a brewery, but it's, it's not a brewery, but it's a it's a bar. Um, they preserved they had great landscaping mines, landscaping arch landscape architecture mines on it to preserve a lot of the historical structures in it. And then you can see there's a lot of like preserved graffiti, which is an interesting thing too. But it's a it's terrific activation. I mean, today it's a little bit cool, but man, like last yesterday, if you're out there, like it would be probably even hard to find a seat. I mean, it's just it's super popular. It opened about 
I don't know, six to 12 months ago. I mean, fantastic, right? That is a theme. Like this corridor, you know, being 30 to 30, 32 to 36 miles long is gonna be, frankly, it's gonna be a mix of going through natural areas and developed areas. And that's gonna be, we're, we're embracing that. Like, so some place, we're gonna go through some of the natural areas, um, but then there's also trail side development. How can you, I help people to live their daily lives along this corridor. You know, in Austin, this is like the rail corridor. You know, there are a lot of destinations along. There have been, when it was first built, there weren't any des really that many destinations. It's grown to be that. So part of the reason why I got into this, you know, just like you said, you wanted to live in a place without cars. I think that, yeah. So like, how can we reimagine Austin and the Austin Metro from the inside out of being able to live your life without encountering cars? And I, I think that we really can, you know, 10, 15 years from now, 20 years, you know, start to see more people able to actually live their daily lives along this corridor and hardly ever have to encounter cars. And that's creating a local example that we can then repeat locally as well. Um, and of course the train makes it, makes it really helpful because if you bike several miles one way, you might be too tired and not want to bike the whole way back. Going this way, we're going to see some small shops. Again, the trail doesn't, it sees some travel, some traffic these days, but as it gets more traffic, it'll be more viable to have, you know, more trail side development. So you see some small shops up here, like there's a barber shop, and then further up there's a dentist and so on. This is actually one of the first sections that was built as was um, some of these other sections over here. This is gonna be, over here is gonna be a challenging place. And I'll, just to orient you all, this is an intersection of railways. So the red line actually curves up north here. And this will be what is known as the green line. Right now it's also called the Mocan or Missouri, Kansas line that goes out uh, east. Um, so yes, yeah, so the red line goes up north and we're gonna, we're taking basically the on-street route because there's no trail completed in this area. Um, one thing I will know is that you know, the city does look for all kinds of opportunities for rails with trails. And so there will be a trail uh, along here. Um, I think it'll be completed within the next couple of years that will take you to um, the existing Southern Walnut Creek Trail, which is more, really, they're only, if you're in Austin, that's one of the older paved trails in Austin. So it's, it's a really nice place on Saturdays. You see tons of people using it. It, it goes in really in just a huge, pretty wide green belt along along the creek and it's 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 beautiful just to get you oriented a little bit this is also a great connection down to ladybird lake it's about i think it's about a mile down this way but there's a cycle track the entire way part of the east link which connects the Mueller redevelopment to the river Yeah, this is a cycle track. This is actually one of Austin's first cycle tracks. Um, 
It, uh, it was an interesting conversation. Down here, you have some weird compromises just related to car parking and like, all, you know, all that kind of stuff. When we go up here, it's gonna turn into a trail in about a half mile or so. It'll go through an, an area, really beautiful trees and so on. Um, it actually used to have homes there, but they were in the floodplain and and I guess just, I, I don't know the exact history, but basically the, the houses were taken down and now it's a, now it's a linear park. Uh, it's called Boggy Creek Greenbelt. So Tom, how much of the Red Line Parkway trail has been developed to, to this point? About, about 15, 10 to 15%. Okay, 10 to yeah. 15%, fantastic. And how much of it is sort of like this, uh, where it's, you know, pathways through and trails through the park, parkland? I would say about roughly half of it is through parks. Okay. I would, yeah, something like that. And, and is that sort of the projection? Is it'll be like this as it continues to build out? It'll just vary. I think that, um, you know, mileage wise, um, there's a large section sort of in between the cities that we just don't know. It's, it's a completely undeveloped ranch, Robinson Ranch. Oh, OK. But we don't know exactly how that'll develop. Um, I think it'll end up being sort of a greenway-like experience because right. there's so much space. Um, I think, you know, as you get further north, it's not exactly tight, but, but yeah, it'll be, I mean, I think through a lot of the central Austin, there'll be a lot of commercial and residential right nearby, and there will be less opportunity for big swaths of green space. Nice. And then, yeah, I'll just mention another existing section up in Avery Ranch area does kind of go through green space. So geographically, we just we were kind of going east from downtown, and then we started following Boggy Creek. Um, as you know, trains and railways they have to follow very gentle contours. So the the train follows Boggy Creek for a few miles north, and then it follows a ridge line through Central Austin all the way up to North Austin, then to Cedar Park and Leander. So it takes it's it's one of the oldest geographical features uh, built up geographical features in Austin Metro. A couple of things to point out here. So. It was built to bring granite to the state capitol, to rebuild the state capitol. And so it's these, these blocks over here are some of the things that actually fell off of the, the railroad when they were bringing it to the capitol. And there's no effective way to put it back onto the train. So those have been sitting there since the late 19th century. And you'll see that if you go take the train, you'll see that up and down the corridor. And then closer to now, as you can see, these, these pillars have uh, terrific artwork along, along them, and they all tell different stories, and they're, they're multiple artists chosen. There's one new bridge that really helped connect this trail, and that's and because of that one new bridge over the creek, it actually has made this much more accessible and much more vibrant. Like when the weather's, when on, a, on a lot of days, including when the weather's great, um, you'll just, it'll just be constant traffic up and down. It's the one just after, going this way, it's just after the, the baseball fields. That was funded in part by transit funding that was sort of rebated back to the city for transit support of infrastructure. So the, our, our local transit is funded, historically it's funded through 1% sales tax. 
and uh, some of that was rebated to help build that bridge which connects to the MLK station. More recently, for those transit nerds, we do also have a property tax amount that funds, funds the, the new build out of the transit system. I will say, you know, thinking about this corridor, I think probably the ideal section would be like, you know, continuing on two, two separate trails, probably a wider pedestrian trail that's really not wide enough for the, even the use it gets now. So trying to map out where we could have like probably 60 foot wide green space where you can fit in trails and have it feel comfortable enough. We're gonna go right up through here and the green space does get narrowed down to about 60 feet, but it still feels pretty comfortable. And so I think that that's, I mean, we're gonna have that conversation probably more publicly about like how, what is sort of the ideal width if we can have the space. Uh, but I think this, this section up here kind of shows what the, what the narrowest is that doesn't make it feel like it's industrial. I think our next stop is gonna be MLK Station. So anything else that people can think of? Especially anything else? Oh, Brianna joined us on a ride, I don't know if you noticed. Brianna is one of our board members. One thing that I would probably point out as we're rolling down through here, um, we'll go through some uh, several different neighborhoods and you'll take notice of the fact that uh, many of the houses have trails that connect here. And you can tell that they were probably once cul-de-sacs, but now they are you know, connected to the trail. So you have really nice neighborhood connectivity to this trail as we go through. And then we'll also see a wonderful community uh, garden just before we get to the, uh, the transit st station, so. Yeah, thanks for that, John. So we'll stop at MLK Station. I was out here a couple of weeks ago with Sean Saldana from, um, well, he's, I guess he's kind of with Texas Standard, but he was doing it for AT Explained. Yeah. There's a story that they're gonna do. We were kind of incidental, but there should be some, there should be a story on this trail coming up soon, I think. Oh, good. Yeah, I mean, swinging the camera around here, Tom, this is just one of the most delightful, you know, bits of infrastructure, all ages and abilities infrastructure that has come in to the city in a long time. And uh, I've put videos out that people have seen from around the world and including in the Netherlands. And they're just like really, really excited yeah. at the quality. And they're all actually really excited at the, uh, the red color too, okay. the terracotta color, because it definitely has that reminder for them of being in the Netherlands. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, they do use red there, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's okay. the signification for red means bike lanes. Yeah. <laughs> and bike paths, feet struts, and feet spots. Oh yeah, and it's so much better than it just being plain white. Yeah. Um, it's just so stark, especially in the summer. Yeah, and here's one of those great connectors yeah. to the neighborhood. What would you say your biggest challenge is right now, Tom? Um, biggest challenge. I think we need more staff. That's one thing, of course. Yeah. But I think that I think um, I think coordinating the different parties, like it's just a lot of this is iterative. So, like I say, you know, we just had a we were hoping that some funding would go toward the parkway up north, and it, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And part of that was maybe just a break in communication. We'll go left, sharp left, you know, I guess, but. Um, so I think just, yeah, and actually I was thinking about this a little bit. I mean, we definitely focus quite a bit on Austin, but probably about a third of the trail goes through either uh, Cedar Park or Leander. And there's definitely support up there, no question. I mean, very enthusiastic support. But I think we were trying to figure out how to balance having some regularity, some uniformity along the corridor versus making sure that each place has its own sort of say and autonomy and we don't know you know i'm we're just a nonprofit. like we can't tell any city what to do but we're also just trying to figure out what makes sense even if if, if we had our choice so i think um so we just have to make the case for example that it should be wide enough that people when it's when that people don't avoid it simply because it's too crowded because we see that on some of our local trails 
that they're just too crowded. Like people won't go out to them at you know at times because they're actually too crowded. Right. So I think in Cedar Park and Leander, they're not necessarily as used to that. Yeah. Um, and so just getting out ahead of that. Yeah. Do you have any trail organizations that you look to for inspiration that also needs, you know, goes through multiple jurisdictions here in the Central Texas area? Well, I mean, certainly Great Springs Project, they're somewhat of a helpful model. There's, there's some differences just in the, the nature of what they're, what they're doing. But that's definitely been helpful. I think one of the things that, one of our biggest challenges to date has simply been getting the right of way from, um, you know, getting the right of way like secured and like easy to use from Capital Metro. And that's a pretty unique challenge. I haven't, not a lot of other trails organizations are going through that in the same way. Right. So that's that's been, you know I feel like we've had to chart some of our ter some of our territory on our own um, so but yeah I mean other organizations I mean just look I've definitely been looking to Midtown Greenway in Minneapolis and Atlanta Beltline as well Atlanta Beltline's um, I think one of the good examples they're gonna put they're planning to put rail transit then we'll take a sharp left they're planning to put transit along their corridor but um, it won't be freight rail, so it'll be, it'll be more, all the specifications will be different. I'll wrap it up with just a few other remarks. I think I mentioned before, there are three cities and two counties along the corridor. And then there's, and the three cities are Austin, Cedar Park, and Leander. And there's some sort of power imbalances in the sense of like Austin, you know, I think sometimes Cedar Park and Leander want to make sure they still have their say in how things get done. But then Austin is such a big entity. Um, the other sort of, things that are at play of course is cap metro owns owns much of the right of way for example cedar park is not in the cap metro system they're not actually part of the transit system whereas austin and leander are and i'm just bringing this up as like these different sort of dynamics that are going on our state department of transportation TxDOT, has actually been so far pretty helpful i mean i mean there are for pretty much a roads organization but like working with the staff locally they've been very helpful on on different needs. So like the 4th Street Crossing, like I mentioned. We are hoping still to, to complete an end-to-end -end route by 2030. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> We're still working at it. And another thing exciting that's happening this, you know, this year, um, like I mentioned, there was a red line trail study. The results of, the draft results of that should be out April or May. And then the public will be able to weigh in on, on, on that. That'll show where the trail could fit in. There'll be like some illustrations some of like what the what it could look like to help excite the public. And then we're also independently doing a wayfinding project for a portion of the corridor too, uh, which is an interesting thing because the city hasn't quite done something quite like this before. Yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll, I mean, I think we're pretty much finished, but if there are any questions, you can come up to me and ask. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this special Yimby Town 2024 tour of the Red Line Parkway and a special thanks going out to Tom Wald, Executive Director of the Red Line Parkway Initiative. Hey, if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. And if you're enjoying this content that I'm producing here on the Active Towns channel, please consider supporting my efforts. It's easy to do. Just head on over to activetowns.org and click on the support button. I will mention that those of you who participate in my Patreon, you do get early and ad-free access to all my video content. Again, thank you all so much for tuning in. It means so much to me. Until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.